All right, so welcome back. Yesterday we went over how to do channel EQ equalization on your audio. And today we're gonna to talk about how to apply a compressor, which to me is probably uh, perhaps the most important one out of all these three that I'm gonna explain. Uh, compressor makes your voice, it, it's kind of like a normal, it's kind of like normalizing your voice. You, you see, we, we have uh, fluctuations in our voice. Sometimes we speak louder, sometimes we slow down. And what compressor does, it tries to even out the high points and the low points. So our, our voice sounds loud throughout the video. So let's jump over to the computer and I'll show you how that works. All right, so now that we've done channel EQ on our first video, if you haven't watched that, please go ahead and do so. There's a card right here, check it out. The next thing is compressor. So compressor is all about evening out our voice because it gets loud sometimes and then it gets really low and we're trying to make it all even so it sounds equally as loud. So if we search for the effect down here, compressor, here it is. We just drag it over to our video clip with the audio on it and let's open up compressor. So for this, we actually do have to play the audio, uh, usually with EQ, I just save that preset and I apply it and I don't check much into it. But with compressor, you do have to come in here every time and uh, you know look at your peaking level. So we're gonna play this audio. We're gonna see where our audio starts clipping. We're gonna look at this right here. So let's play it. So <laughs> I just wanted to show you that because if you're gonna be shooting YouTube videos, just know that a vintage lens is a little bit more work. You have to set focus using. So you see the mostly my audio is clipping around negative six, negative eight, somewhere around there. So this threshold, we want to set it somewhere around there. You want to bring this down to negative, let's say like negative seven is good. And the ratio, I go to three to one or 3.1 to 1. It's usually 3, 3 to 1, but I can't get it at 3 exactly. So just drag it back, 3 to 1. And no makeup gain, um, auto gain 0, auto gain off. And then the release, I, want, I always set this to around 100 milliseconds, 130, anywhere from 100 to 150 milliseconds. The attack, I leave it at 2.5. Some people leave it at one, anywhere from one to five is good. 2.5, let's go down the middle. And the knee, I leave it at 0 0.6. So those are the settings. Uh, which primarily one set in the beginning is the threshold, which is we're paying attention to where our audio is clipping. So this is gonna change. These ones, the ratio, the makeup gain, I just leave it at zero, the release, uh, I always leave it the same, the tack and the knee the same. This is what changes uh, this uh, this threshold. Okay, so let's play the audio again from the beginning. So <laughs> I just wanted to show you that because if you're gonna be shooting YouTube video. Okay, so pay attention to this right here. Right now, it it's telling us how much our audio is being reduced at negative seven. And it, it seems like it's a lot because it's hitting the negative five a lot. So. Maybe our compressor is too strong. So in order to reduce that, we bring down the thre threshold or we bring it up to maybe negative 5.5 and we play it again and pay attention to this meter right here because if it goes above five too much, then our compressor is too, is too strong. So let's do it again. Let's play this. So <laughs> I just wanted to show you that because if you're gonna be shooting YouTube videos, just know that a vintage lens is a little bit more work. You have to set focus using some. Okay, you see there, I have it a negative 5.5, which is not bad. Sometimes it goes up to negative five. It's not bad. Let's see if we had set this to like negative 14 and pay attention to this meter and see what happens. Let me play it. So <laughs> I just wanted to show you that. You see this needle, it's just like, it's compressing too much of the audio. It, it, if this needle starts jumping too high, then we're doing a bad job with the compressor. It's too strong. So you want to keep it below negative five. This needle should not be going above negative five. It should be anywhere from one to two to three decibels, somewhere around there. So again, let's dial this back to like negative one and then 
let's play from the beginning again. Let's see what happens. So <laughs> I just wanted to show you that because if you're gonna be shooting YouTube videos, just know that a vintage lens is a little bit more work. You have to set focus using some. You see a negative one dB, it's really not working. It's really, we're not doing anything to the audio. So we want this thing to work, to compress the loud parts and also to bring up the low part. So everything starts sounding the same. We want the compressor to work, to do its job. So again, let's, let's bring this up to like six. And let's play this again from the beginning. So <laughs> I just wanted to show you that because if you're gonna be shooting YouTube videos, just know that a vintage lens is a little bit more work. You have to set focus using something, then you gotta step in and you have to remember. So that's not too bad right there. Uh, negative six, negative 5.5. It's good. That's that's a, that's a good point. So whenever you're recording your audio, remember you want to peak around negative 12 to negative six. Let's say your audio was really low. You can, let's say it was just like coming in at negative 18. You can also add some decibels of gain up here to get it to a spot, you know, somewhere around negative nine, negative six. And then you can start applying the, this uh, compressor. That's how I would go about it. Maybe that's not the right way to go about it, but you know, that's, that's how I would do it. So yeah, hopefully that makes sense how you want to apply a compressor. You just basically, you want it to work and you want to not overdo it as well and not underdo it. So just got to find that sweet spot. So that's the second step I take in processing my audio. First, I start with the channel EQ, then a compressor, and then I move on to the adaptive limiter, which is the topic I'm gonna to talk about in tomorrow's video. Uh, but regarding this, this video, this uh, actually this plugin, the compressor, please let me know if you have questions, any comments, or you know better ways to do it, please drop them down below. Also, if you haven't already subscribed, please go ahead and do so, and like this video if you found it useful. All right, guys, thank you very much again, and I'll see you on the next video.